Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Yak Tribe Kayak Show. I'm your host, Heath, and I'm excited to be here today and to have you guys with us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to everybody who supported us this far. This is episode number six. And so thank you so much to everyone who's been on our show so far. It's been I've had a lot of great feedback, and I can only attribute that to you guys. For those who actually take the time to sign on to iTunes and SoundCloud and Spotify and YouTube and Facebook, and I guess this is kind of a plug, but for those of you who sign on and listen or watch, I'm so grateful for you, and it's allowing me to continue, take time out of my day, out of my week, out of my work schedule, and to bring this show to you guys. And so I don't mean that in any sort of negative way. Yes, this takes time, and I'm excited to do it because this is what I think is building Yak Tribe right now. This is what I think is getting a lot of excitement around what we're doing in our community. So I'm happy to do it, and I'm thankful for you guys. And so this show, we're actually not going to bring anybody in. This is going to be a show where I just answer questions that you guys have asked, whether it was on Instagram or Facebook, DM somewhere or Twitter. Um, I'm happy to do shows like this. I actually really uh, look forward. I've, I've been really looking forward to doing a show like this because I'd like to just sit here, hear some of your guys' questions, write them on my laptop, and answer them. And so we are going to jump right into that. And guys, we're still doing a giveaway for this show. Uh, it's going to be some Yak Tribe swag. We already gave away a line cutters a combo pack with the kayak fishing net. We gave away some KBF stuff. We gave away some Yak Tribe stuff, action hat, DIY kit. And guys, I've said this in a few episodes leading up to this, but here, maybe you can maybe you can piece this together, but here, I think in about two or three days, we're going to leave, we as in my family and I and my kids, we're going to head up to Tennessee. We're going to get away for just a little bit of a family, a little bit of a family vacation. It's like two, two and a half days because I've been out doing some shows like FLW. I just did Ride the Bull, which is awesome. Check out that footage. You can find it on my, my YouTube channel, Rex's YouTube channel, CCA, Ride the Bull, find it there somewhere. Uh, but I've been, I've been out of town a lot lately, and so my family and I, we decided to go get away for a few days, just spend time together and enjoy a little bit of Tennessee. We're going to be in the Pigeon Forge area. We love that. We love that spot out there. And so we're just going to spend some time as a family, disconnect just a little bit. But on the way back home, we're going to be stopping by somewhere and I'm going to be doing an in-person podcast, vlogcast, and uh, we're going to be giving away a kayak here soon. So get excited about that. The way to get involved in all of our giveaways, and guys, I've said this from the beginning, We are you are entered from video one with Chris Santoro and Rad Thrasher from CCA all the way up to whenever we stop doing this podcast or I hope we don't stop but whenever that however far we go with this you are entered whether you commented on video one or video 100 all you have to do is engage with what we're doing engage get involved share it subscribe to the YouTube channel leave a comment just let me know you're doing something and that gets you to enter, uh, gets you entered into win some of this swag, and that's how you be entered into winning a kayak. So thank you guys so much. Let's jump right into it, and I'm going to be answering some questions here. So the first question is from uh, my good friend, a uh, really good friend. He he lives pretty close to me. His name is Adam Whitbeck. And so real quick about Adam Whitbeck, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I grew up kayak fishing uh, with my dad. We would go out. And we would go to the bridges and we would scrape off some barnacle from the pilings and uh, we would catch sheep's head for dinner. It was just this yellow lifetime tandem kayak. But when it comes to like fishing with somebody for real, like kayak fishing with somebody other than my dad and going with a friend or somebody I knew, the first person I ever went kayak fishing with was Adam Whitbeck. And so, bro, um, you mean a lot to me, a good friend of mine, him and Shane, AKA Magic Yacker on Instagram, they wanted to know, I guess this is a super light question to start it off, what ethnicity are you? So I'm half Filipino and half white. All right, my mom is white. She's American. She's got all kinds of European and Irish and all this stuff in her blood. And my dad is full Filipino. And so put those together and you get me. And so my kids are a quarter Filipino. I've got three sons. And that is my ethnicity. No, it's not Spanish, which... I guess Filipinos, in a way, can be Spanish. They they were they were taken over by the Spaniards for something like 300 years or something like that, and America came in and uh, basically took over the Philippines and then gave Amer uh, the Philippines their independence. So, yeah, that's what I am, half Filipino, half all kinds of white and European and American and all that good stuff. And so I hope that, answer that's, <laughs> that, I hope that answers that question. All right, Kayak Q305 Fishing says... 
what has been your most memorable fishing trip uh, you have been on and why? How has that fishing trip changed your life for the better or the worse? And so, um, my and, and guys, after this question, we're going to get into some into some uh, uh, other questions that that's not really about Heath, but um, my most memorable kayak fishing trip. I think to date was fishing out of La Jolla in California um, with Kevin Nakata, AKA Sea Samurai. Um, so I went over there and I hung out with some of the Fish Village guys, um, like Mike Ponce and, and and some of his guys, Charlie, and and I got to go out a few times, but it was the most memorable trip because I really wanted to get out and launch from La Jolla, which is a pretty awesome launch. It can be sketchy at some times. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty uh it's pretty radical, and so the waves are, the breakers there are, are, are pretty unforgiving at times, and so I would launch out there, and I'd go out, and I'd be out there for, for seven, eight, nine, ten hours just trolling and looking for a yellowtail and trying to catch my first one ever, and if you know what a yellowtail is, you know that they are an awesome fish, really good eating, um, great fight, and so I went out looking for one. That's kind of what they're looking at, uh, looking for out there, or sea bass, but... Um, yeah, I went out and failed over and over and over and over, but kept going out. I went out by myself sometimes, which is pretty sketchy, going catching bait. I went out with Diana from, from Yak Tribe out in Cali, went out with Charlie, and just couldn't get it done. And so Mike, uh, Mike Ponce, um, founder of Fish Village, he hooked me up with Kevin Nakata, and, a.k.a. Sea Samurai. And so I went out with Kevin, and I've heard all these stories and these legends and these tales about Kevin Nakata and how he can go out there and basically dip his finger in the water, give it a little taste, and then all of a sudden he knows where the fish are. And so that's basically what happened that day. I mean, we got out there and Kevin's out there, man. He's he's looking around, he's lurking, he's just getting a feel for, he's like looking at the flag and he's like smelling the air and, and, and doing whatever he does. And he's like, you know what? The yellowtail are this way today. And so we go out to the spot and, and well, they're not there exactly. And so I'm getting a little discouraged and man, I'm even thinking like, oh, does Kevin even know what he's doing? And then, oh, we should just go in. This is just all a fail. I'll just tack this up to learning experience and, and whatever. So, um, But towards the end of the day, all the other kayakers had went in. All the other the charter boats, they weren't catching anything. They went in. Um, Kevin's like, let's just go back out. Like, We were already like pretty far. So he's like, let's just go out again. Let's just do one more pass straight out. I was like, oh, okay, let's do it. And so I followed Kevin. All of a sudden, he sees just this, I don't know how he saw it, but he's, I mean, he, he spent a lot of time out there, but he sees a school of yellowtail, and uh, I get on my first yellowtail ever, get that sucker in, um, I taste the heart, which was absolutely disgusting, I'm still not sure if it was a prank or not, but I got my first yellowtail out of a kayak um, out in La Jolla, California, and so that was my most memorable, it was very challenging for me, it, 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 it taught me to persevere, to keep trying, you don't always get it the first time, and so um, I also gained a lot, I, I I did a lot of offshore while I was in Panama. It was like a week of offshore, and I've always done offshore, you know, like out in the Gulf and stuff. But um, going out of La Jolla really challenges you, and and you learn a lot about offshore kayak fishing just going through those breakers and launching there. And so that's where I really learned how to come in backwards, and I did a YouTube video about that, which you can find, how to come backwards in the surf. And so I learned a lot on that trip, and I think by far was the most memorable memorable trip that I currently have. And so... Yeah, I hope that answers that question. Um, shout out to Kevin. Thank you so much for doing that, man. So this next one is from Pure Florida Water Sports, a.k.a. my buddy Derek Burgos. He owns a shop out in Wesley Chapel, um, and he said talk safety slash self-rescue. And so let me touch on that a little bit. First of all, when it comes to safety, um, there's a lot of resources out there that you can find and that you can watch and that you can read. Um, but here's my suggestions know what you're, go ahead and make your decisions before you have to make your decisions when your life depends on it, okay? Um, kayak fishing is a serious thing. You're out there a lot of times by yourself, and the water can be unforgiving a, a lot of times. You never know, especially out in Florida. You don't know when the weather is going to change, really anywhere you're at. And so it is a dangerous sport. I know a lot of times we try and be tough about it and try and be, you know, super macho about it and like, we're out here kayak fishing. And, you know, I just feel like we need to tone it down down for a second and look at the reality and, and understand that kayak fishing is 
dangerous, okay? Um, it's a dangerous sport, and so we need to look at safety as a number one priority. You need to be able to make decisions ahead of time before you have to make those decisions on the water, and so it's second nature. And so what are you going to do when you fall out of your boat? What are you going to do when you get a hook in the hand and you're by yourself? What are you going to do when you get a hook in your eye and you're by yourself? What are you going to do when you turtle your kayak and you lose everything? What are you going to do when the weather changes? What are you going to do? And so you need to have these types of questions answered before you encounter it. So I'm not suggesting that on your kayak you have the entire Walmart safety aisle and fishing aisle and tool aisle with you, but what are you going to do when your pedal drive breaks? You know, how are you going to get back? Are you really able to paddle in that big, wide pedal drive that you purchased? And so my strategy is to try and answer these questions and be prepared for these types of things before I encounter these situations. And so let's talk safety. Let me talk my kayak. So I have a, build, a, a manual bilge pump on my kayak. I think it's by NRS um, and it's just a, just a manual. I think I got it from Sports Authority or something a long time ago when I started kayak fishing. Um, so I have that. I have a safety kit. Inside my safety kit, I have bandages. Man, I should have brought it with me, but I have bandages. Um, I have... I have super glue, which is my number one thing I use. I've cut myself a few times and I just clean it out. And, uh, you know, that, that antibacterial uh, ointment, put it in there, whatever, clean that out, uh, fresh water, whatever. And then I just super glue the cut together and then put a bandaid around it. So I keep super glue a lot. Um, I also have a adjustable wrench to be able to do maintenance on my drive. I have another set of um, masses for my, my pedal drive because I'm using a Hobie currently. Um, I have a, um, what are those things called that th you can use them to cut like really thick strands of, of, of wire. And so basically I keep a big cutter on there that's about this big. It's about like, I don't know, 11 inches, 12 inches. And I can cut a hook off or cut the barb of a hook off to be able to pull a fishing hook out. And so I, ha I have a, P you know, um, a uh, flotation device, a PFD, sometimes I say PDF, I'm thinking like um, documents, but I have PFD on, and so I have a safety knife, and I have I have these types of things to be able to do a little bit of self-rescue. I do have some paracord in my hatch because paracord can also be used in a pinch to um, fix rudder lines and to tether things and to maybe tie yourself off or whatever the case is, and so you need to think about these things. Okay, so we're going to move on into the um, self-rescue. You know, there's a lot of places out there that will um, teach self-rescue. Uh, I know a lot of people say, and I don't want to get on a um, PFD rant here, but you know, you don't just wear a PFD. Uh, the people who do, they're not just wearing it because they can't swim. So I can swim, right? But the thing is, is that, and I can swim, and if I fall in a foot of water or two feet of water, which is what I'm normally um, fishing, uh, I can definitely swim. I'm not, I'm not a dummy. And so I took swimming lessons as a kid. I've always been in the water. I grew up in the Gulf Coast. And so I know how to swim. That's not a problem. Um, but the thing is, is that I stand up and fish a lot and I pull around and I sight fish. And so there's been a few times where I fell um, into my kayak. Like I was standing on my seat pulling around and I'm like, oh, I got a little tipsy and I fell down. And so the reason why I wear one is because if I fall down and hit my face on like my pedal drive or on the side of my kayak or a rod holder, or I become unconscious for whatever reason, which is a very slim chance, but it could happen. Uh, I want to just be able to fall into the water if that's the case, if I do fall into the water and float up with my face in the air. So like I stay alive and don't drown. And so, um, that's the reason why I wear one, but let's talk about self-rescue for a second. Um, you need to know how to get back in your boat before you ever fall out and have to get back in your boat. Okay. So go out one day, go out to the beach, go out to the lake, go out to your pool, whatever you got available to you, fall out of your kayak, turtle your kayak, fall out there, you know, make it happen on purpose. Okay. And then try and get in in your kayak. So there's a few different ways. Some people like coming in through the side where they grab the other side of their kayak and they kick, kick, kick real, real hard and they pull up and they get their belly into the kayak and they're laying on their kayak and they shimmy their way in. Um, I personally don't like that method. It's never been a method that it, it works. And I see, it ha I see people doing that method all the time. But me personally, what I've realized on my kayak is that that doesn't work the best for me. So I like to come up to, I swim up to the front of my kayak 
and I can turn my kayak over. But I swim to the front of my kayak, and I come up over the bow, and I have these rails on my Hobie that I just hold onto that, and I shimmy my way up, and I pull myself up, and it's much more stable. Yeah, my kayak tips a little bit, but by the time it gets anywhere near a tippy, I'm all the way um, basically in my seat. And so that's the way I re-enter my kayak. So you need to make sure you know how to get back in your kayak and how to flip your kayak back over when it really matters. I'm talking about when the when you're out there and you go back to get a rod and all of a sudden just the way you lean back, it tips your kayak, you need to know how to get back in. And so I was just at Ride the Bull, right? And so there were a few people who flipped their kayak and it didn't seem like they knew how to get back in. That has nothing to do with Ride the Bull and everything to do with the angler who couldn't get back in their own kayak. What if the chase boats weren't out there making sure everyone was safe? You're just going to drift away from your kayak or just lay into your kayak until somebody can help you? You have to know how to get back on your kayak. That's so, so important. Make sure even though you have a pedal drive, if you have one, to have a set of paddles that you can use on your boat to get back to land. And so I, I can go on and on about, um, about safety and self-rescue, but uh, that's just what I'm going to touch on right now. And so I'm going to move on. Thank you, Derek, for that question. Let's go to this is C underscore C fishing. And this question says, what is one thing about kayak fishing you wish was different? And so my answer to that is this. I wish, and every industry has this, I wish that there was way less elitism in our industry, meaning the guys who, um, and, and you know, you guys who know me know I'm not a person that just talks crap and talks trash just to, just to do it, okay? That's not who I am, um, and if that's if that's who you think I am, I would just challenge you to maybe watch some of my content and know that I'm not that type of person. But there is this elitism in our industry, just like there is in every other industry. The guys that think like, man, I'm just the best, man, I've got the decals, I've got the shirt, man, I've got all, I've got all the logos, like, all oh, just all over, man, I'm just like the best, because I use this kayak, and I use this rod and reel, so like, oh, you can't afford that, you have to use that other stuff, you have to use combos that you buy at Walmart, oh, man, just wait till the day that you can get this combo, and this thing, and this and that, and it's an elitism attitude that, oh, man, I'm just so much better than you, and, and and that's happening because kayak fishing it's it's cheaper than than getting a bass boat and 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 doing that whole thing or getting a you know a, a bay boat and so we can dump you know some people can dump a lot more money into the sport and so it's easy to get that elitism look and elitism attitude and then you start seeing people might have not started that way maybe you're just a little bit you were genuine and and then you you start adding this to your kayak and you got that nice Lowrance that was the size of your flat screen TV and you got this kayak that had you know the pedal drive and then you got all of a sudden you stopped wearing like normal dry fits but now you got like the custom dry fit that has everybody's logo on it and your name on the back and like that's who you are now and you're this guy and you're this persona and and it's hard to approach you and 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 now you've got this sense of elitism because at a tournament and at an event you're off to the side and you don't really want to make eye contact with anybody and you're kind of there with your group and you're in all your matching uniforms and everything like that which is totally cool i know those groups that have matching uniforms that you can go and kick it and have a barbecue with them and they'll invite anybody over to have food with them but then there's that group that you feel like man you can't even get a look over from those guys and so that's the group that i'm talking about this elitism mindset i wish there was let of that was holy cow that was a rant i guess i'm sorry for the rant but that is what we don't want in Yak Tribe, right? Like that's not who we are and that's not what we want because that stuff is contagious. Um, and it's this exclusive type thing. And so I really wish that was not so much the case. It's not, there's way more people who are not that than are that, but I just wish there was even less of that in our industry, which is this elitism mentality. And so, man, my whole thing is like, what do you got? Get on the water be cool, man, just be chill. People are people, real people, real stories, real connections, man, that's who we are. And so I've never really connected with these elitism type guys that kind of walk around the tournament like you can't, but at the same tournament, you can find guys that are in that jersey and in that thing and they have, and they're just, they'll come up to you and they'll kick it with you and, and you can have a drink with them and you can just hang out and have some fun. And man, they're like your long lost brother right? I'm not knocking the persona or the look or whatever the case is. I'm not saying everybody needs to look poor, but what I'm saying is there's a difference in personality and it's, and, and it's very distinguishable. You can, you can catch it and point it out and see it fast. And so, um, I wish there was a less of an elitism mindset and an exclusive, 
an exclusive type mindset uh, in the kayak fishing industry. And so, um, so yeah, that's that. Okay. At Lip Gripper says, I'm a fairly new angler on Instagram and I'm looking to build my following. I've been fishing out of the same beat up yak for almost 10 years. I really would like to find a kayak to part a kayak company to partner with and help promote their kayaks. I don't have the kind of money to buy a nice new fishing kayak or I would. Any tips on how to be more attractive to kayak companies and gain potential sponsors? And so I want to talk about the mindset when it comes to, to this question real quick. Um, and at, at Lip Gripper, first of all, let me say you are killing it already. I checked your Instagram. I peeped it, bro. You're already killing it out of that kayak and catching big fish consistently, man. So props to you. I'm not knocking you, but the reason why I do this show, I'm not trying to fake it on this on this platform. I'm trying to tell you how tell you my opinions, okay? And so, um, my opinions can be wrong. That's fine. But I'm gonna come at you uh, honest and give you real advice and give anybody real advice that is watching this show. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. And so, what I want to do is talk about mindset real quick. So, I believe your intentions are super pure, right? And so, you're in this kayak. It, it may be a little bit beat up. You said you've been fishing in it for ten years. I understand the want for a new kayak, a nicer kayak, maybe someone that's a little bit bit bigger, not a sit in one or whatever the case is, something that you can have more rod storage and you want, you want your time on the water to be better. And I totally understand that. And I'm with you and I'm not knocking you for wanting something better. Right. And I also noticed that you said in there, you don't have enough money, um, to get that kayak that you want. But I would also challenge where you're looking and your resources, right? Because there are really, really good deals out there, especially on Craigslist, especially on OfferUp and, and these Facebook marketplace where people are getting rid of kayaks. That is going to be a great upgrade and great addition to what you're currently doing. But I want to talk about mindset real quick. When people, I get this question sometimes and people are saying, hey, look, I want something better. And so here's my approach. I want to be I want to be appealing to a company that can give me something and then I will do something for them to justify why they gave me that thing, right? And so I want to challenge this this type of thinking. Um, you are not helping the kayak company by by promoting their stuff. Okay? You're not real okay. You are, but you're really not. The kayak company is already there. They're already, they have investors, they have money, they're already doing what it is they're doing. They're manufacturing their kayaks. They are in big box stores or they are in small shops. If they are an established company, if you know about them, then they're already doing, they're doing fine. I mean, they could get bigger, they could get more business, but they don't really need you to come along and say, oh man, what is this guy who's on Instagram? Let me just swoop up this guy because I know he can change the whole traje trajectory of our sales for this year. Okay. That's not really how it goes, but I think there's a lot of people in the industry who have, who have taken on this pro staff persona. And even though they're an accountant, you know, their, their, their Facebook says the 10 companies that they work for. And so what, what happens is me and everybody else, we see that and we say, okay, that's how he got what he has. Okay. That's how I need to go about doing what I do so I can be the same thing that they are because they got the kayak and they got the nice stuff and they have the sponsored baits and they have the fishing poles and they have the fishing reels. And so they're in their Facebook says that they have all these, all these companies that they work for when really it's, that's not the case. They are getting these discounts and they are paying for these products at a discounted rate. And so it lightens the load on them, but they take on this persona like they are Mike Iconelli or, or Jimmy Houston or the guy that wears the T from tenant. We are not those people, but we try and be like that peop those people, even though we're not. And so it's okay for them to act that way because that's who they are. They make their living doing, they, they, they have established themselves. And now Minn Kota and Toyota, they're paying them a ton of money to put their logos on their shirt and to do what it is they do, right? And so we see that and we say, okay, now I need something 
So how do I become this type of person or look this kind of way so that then I can get stuff for free? Imagine if everybody thought that way, these companies would go out of business. There'd be nothing to go around. There'd be no kayak. They'd give away every single kayak. If they gave away a kayak for everyone that hit them up to get something for free, they would be out of business, okay? And so I run a lot, I run a lot of marketing for, for outdoor companies. I don't like to name them because people don't need to know, um, but I get these messages all the day, all, all day long. Hey, hey, here's my following. It's like 100 followers, which I'm not knocking 100 followers. It's not about followers. And I think somebody asked this question later that we're going to talk about that. But I see it and they say, hey, you know, I have 100 people at, at my disposal to show this to. Uh, you give me X and I'll post it. Okay. That is not appealing. Because as a company, I have to justify to people above me why you deserve this thing. And so my strategy for you would be, it, it, one is to note this. You are not really helping the kayak company by promoting their stuff. And they don't need you as bad as people has convinced them, convinced you that they need you. And, you know, there's a reason why Hobie, I've been using Hobie for, for four or five years. And I do a ton of content and promotion for Hobie. And I've taken so many pictures fishing out of their kayak. I'm not complaining. But what, I'm, I'm using this as a point. But Hobie hasn't hit me up to pay me $2,000 a month just to rock Hobie and stay on their team. Because Hobie doesn't need me. They know that there's people out there regardless who are going to promote their stuff and they're going to be on their water and they're going to see people using their product and they're going to get all of that free promotion regardless if Heath or Yak Tribe shows off Hobie. And so that's why I haven't gotten a call from Hobie saying, hey, what can we do to keep you on the team and, or, or get you on the team and to keep you on and, and to show you and give you new products and do, because they don't need me. Man, they've been around for so long and they have the money and they've got the Man, they've, they've got the market and they, I mean, not all of it, but they've got great market share and they've got plenty of people promoting their stuff for free. All right. And so here's the thing. I want to actually answer your question and not just rant because I'm trying to give a little bit of advice here. Um, when it comes to being more appealing to companies so that they will sponsor you and work with you, here's my advice because I have done it and I was the guy that was the pro staff man. Okay. I was the man when I first got in kayak fishing and I was like, who can I post that for? I'm so awesome because I have 3,000 Instagram followers. Who needs a pro staff? I'll be a pro staff. And I was just going in. And then I had to take a step back. And I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm getting these products for discounts. And then I'm promoting them like I work for them full time. What am I actually doing? And so here's my suggestion. If you want to get to the point to where a company will give you free stuff, and a company will invest in you and what you do. You have to develop really good content. You have to become somebody that is not a salesman, that is not a pro staff persona, because I believe that the pro staff personas that are like 15 pro staffs, they are soon going to be done. Nobody's going to want anything to do with them. I've been talking to a lot of friends in, in the industry that, that, that know what they're talking about, and they are cutting their pro staff like it's nothing. They are getting rid of it. And so my suggestion is to do what will always work for the rest of time, rest of, for the rest of time. Be genuine. Be who you are. Do what you love doing. Okay? Share good content. Don't be a salesman. Don't be pushy. Don't develop this reputation of just handing out, you know, promoting everyone's discount code. Just do you and be really good at doing you. And yes, tag companies, tag them in your pictures, go ahead and shoot them an email and show them the content you're developing so that maybe they'll re repost it and maybe your social media following will grow. Okay, do those things. But don't go asking for anything, okay? The best relationships that I have came from me doing me and me feeling like I did a good job at doing me and developing content and me just constantly sending the company what I did without asking for anything. And then what happens is a lot of times if the company really loves what you're doing and they really like you, they will invest in you and they'll come to you and they'll say, hey, I really appreciate everything you're doing. I would love to give you this. I would love to send you this. It's going to go from a company you know, uh, saying, here's your 20% discount, you know, buy some more baits. And then maybe one day you'll become a bigger portion of our company. No, 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 no. It's going to move more towards just take our stuff 
and do with it what you've been doing. Show off that reel, show off that fishing pole, show off that kayak. And so what you need to do to get to that point is you really need to develop a portfolio of your work. Develop a portfolio and just kill it. I'm talking about grow your social media influ- uh, your social media following. Engage with people. Don't just post. Respond to what people are saying. Go to hashtags and comment on people's stuff without asking for anything in return. And so that's what I did. Um, I went and I would just send people my content, send people my content, never ask for anything. And then they would just initiate that response on what I've been doing. And then the, de- the relationship would really develop. But in the meantime, I was trying to grow my social media following. On Yak Tribe, still to this day, man, I go on the kayak fishing hashtag and I just start conversations because that's what I'm all about, just talking to people and having real engagement and real content and real and real conversation. So I'll see someone post a picture and I'll comment on that picture. Man, what did you catch that on? And then they'll respond. I'll like it, and then sometimes I'll even respond back with a, with a follow-up comment or a question and just develop a relationship. And sure, sometimes it may seem on your end a little bit fake, a little bit, um, a little bit maybe two-faced just a little bit, but you have to move past that, and it will become second nature just to engage with people and ask questions and talk. And you know what will happen? People will start to like you as a person and not just a guy who posts pictures out of his kayak with the fish, Right? And they'll start to see you as a real person and they'll follow you and they'll engage with you. And man, when you post something, they might like it and then this time comment on it. And now maybe your social media following will grow. And you're not trying to be this crazy YouTuber that's like, hey guys, look at me. My name is this kind of guy and I do this kind of thing. And check out this product that I'm using because this product is just the best. And I'm not going to tell you that they sent it for me for free. And I'm not going to tell you that I bought it for a 20% discount. But just look at me because I'm so awesome because I'm showing. Okay, if you if you act like that, you won't get what it is you're looking for. Those guys are so thirsty. Don't be that guy. Be genuine, be real, be true to yourself, but do a really good job. You have to become a marketer and you have to become a researcher and a constant learner and follow people who are doing way better than you and see what it is, what is it that they're doing and trying to incorporate that in what you're doing, but do it out of yourself. Do it in a way that you would actually do it. Don't do it in a way that I would do it. Take my strategy maybe or things that I do and implement it into who you are, into your strategy. And so I would say if you want to become more appealing, do those things. Be you. Become a learner. Become a a real marketer. Do some research. Listen to podcasts. Watch YouTube videos. Listen to Gary Vee. Do those things. And uh, and I think I think eventually after you get some real growth, um, you might be in a better position to be more appealing. In the meantime, keep killing it out of your kayak. Keep catching those big bass. I see you, bro. And just be content, man. Just be content with what you got until you can get what it is you actually want. And so that would be my advice. I hope that that answered your question. It wasn't just a complete a complete uh, uh, poop fest. So. Sorry, guys, I get a little bit passionate sometimes about this stuff because I really care about the people and I really care about our industry. And um, and sometimes I can get a little passionate and a little ranty. So pardon that. And let me move to the next question, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you're sticking around. I, I realize I might step on some toes by saying these things, but I don't have anybody else to interview <clears throat> at the moment. I just wanted to answer these questions. And so sometimes this is just the real Heath that lays it down how I feel. So, OK, this next one is from at underscore real underscore lady. This is Wendy. And she says, what plans do you have for the future of Yak Tribe? Do you have any big big plans. Guys, can I tell you guys my dream? For those of you guys who are watching this right now, my dream for Yak Tribe. My dream for Yak Tribe is to be the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts of kayak fishing, of kayaking. Um, Not just kayak fishing, but kayaking, water sports, um, that, that whole realm of water sports. I want to be, I want to develop one day a real outreach program that is geared towards kids and so i love what i do i love what yak tribe is and we try to give back where we can you know whether whether it's the pack you know relief or you know man this isn't to brag this brag is really on you guys because you guys are the ones who did it but i mean we've we've helped people pay for chemo therapy we've helped people pay for funerals after their parents have passed away we've helped people pay for the food at funerals we've helped People just go to the, doc- the doctor and get treatment or, or whatever the case is, man. Uh, we've helped people um, 
replenish their fishing gear after it was all lost or whatever the case was, stolen. And so that is all because you guys really have believed in what we're doing and have given towards that that thing. And so thank you so much for doing that. But in the future, I really want to get a hold of the generation before us. And so, or sorry, the generation beneath us, the one back here, the kids. And so well, my dream would to would be to have libraries all over the United States. Um, you know, YTKS, YTKS act originally stood for Yak Tribe Kayak Shop. And my original dream was to have a Yak Tribe kayak shop, really a compound where people could come and it would be a shop slash coffee place slash workplace slash conference room place slash pull your RV in and camp. And we'd have a pool in the back with tent camping all around. We had grills all around that people could grill and just make it like a heaven for people to come and just chill and work and do stuff and have hammocks hanging and and, and do that kind of thing. That, that was my dream. And maybe one day that would happen. I don't know. Uh, and YTKS originally stand for Yak Tribe Kayak Shop, and then my latest passion became this show, which is Yak Tribe Kayak Show. And so it's kind of cool how that came a little bit full circle. But I would love to have a library of kayaks all across the U.S. where underprivileged kids or maybe single moms or single dads or, you know, um, or parents who had kids that couldn't afford to go rent a kayak or buy a kayak could come to this garage, this storage unit, this whatever it is, and check out kayaks. And they could check it out just like it was a library book. And they can go and they can have a great time on the water and they could put it back and they would clean it and they would treat it as if it was their own. And each store would have a, or each place would have a volunteer manager that made sure everything was right. And so that's my dream, and I hope to be able to do that one day. Where can I, where I can really, you know, have an impact? Yak Tribe have an impact on on youth's lives like that. And so, that's a big dream, a big plan for Yak Tribe, and maybe one day that will happen. And so, I've got two more questions. Um, this next one is from Redfishology, my man Phil out in Louisiana, always hooked us up and taking care of us while we were there. Um, is a huge supporter, and so, bro, I'm so thankful for you. Um, we got two more questions, then we're going to end this show. So he wants to know, what are the top three reasons you kayak fish? Okay, so here are my top three. Um, to lower my stress levels, to connect with God, and to rethink my priorities. Um, believe it or not, it's not just to fish. I love fishing. I love slaying fish. I hope, I mean, I, I can't go in unless I catch a fish. That, that's, that's the truth. And so I love fishing. But the reason why I go out is because I'm a very high stress person. I have high anxiety. I'm very, I'm creative and my mind's always thinking about the next thing. It's always thinking about the next project, about the next task, about the next client. And so my stress just gets crazy. And so I go out just to de-stress and to, and to re-level my stress and just, just go out there and just relax for a second. Um, next is to connect with God. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm a spiritual person. And I go out there, and it's just a time where I can go and I can think about my devotions. Um, I can think about the devotions that I'm going to share with my creative team at church um, or <clears throat> whatever the case is. I just go and I, and I think, and I almost treat it as a Sabbath to where I just reconnect with God um, and to just thank him for everything that's going on in my life, everything that's going on in my family life and my jobs and my work. Um, and so I, I listen to sermons sometimes and podcasts and just think about that as I fish. And so I, I use that as a time to reconnect with God. Um, and I also think about my, pro, my, my priorities out there. Believe it or not, a lot of my to-do list is developed on the water. I think about my to-do list and what's on it, and I, I, re, I whip out my phone and put my rod down for a second and just reprioritize the things on my to-do list so that I don't get as stressed out between now and the next time I come back on the water. And so those are the main reasons um, why I kayak fish. It's, I mean, I love fishing. I love kayak fishing. I'd ra- I, you know, I can't think of any other type of fishing that I'd like to do, but those, are, those reasons is, is what I'm really trying to execute while I'm on the water. And so... You know, fishing therapy is, is what you call it. And then another one from Redfishology. Um, Redfishology, okay. He says, what kind of content slash message is the most needed slash wanted right now? 
Um, guys, I hate to touch on this subject again, but it's just this is how the show ended. It's just I think the message that is needed but not wanted right now is that pro staffing is hurting you more than it's helping you. And so um, I'm not against pro staffs. Guys, I have relationships with these companies, and I used to be big into pro staff. But I think that this idea of I'm a pro staff and this is what I do, even though you are somebody that does something completely different from a living, for a living, and I understand that there's a lot of people trying to get a career in kayak or in fishing in general, in the fishing industry. And I accept that and I encourage that and I'm rooting for you all the way. But this pro staff persona that most people who are not trying to be a professional fisherman are putting on, it's hurting them more than it's helping them, especially in the long run. And I, I've seen relationships um, messed up because of them, friendships messed up because of them. Um, I've seen their word devalued because when they're mad at the company, they just switch to another company and then everything that they said about that old company, they now take back. And then how do we know that what they're saying about this company is actually true because they just bashed the last company that they left and now this new company is a complete competitor with this old company. And so it's like, how do you trust what people are saying? And now friends are saying that, man, you you don't even like to fish anymore. You just like to go out and get content. You just like to go out and just take pictures. And I'm out here trying to fish and you're trying to call me over for a perfect picture and you're trying to do all this stuff, man, what is going on? You've changed, right? And so I see that going around a lot. Not everybody, but I see that happening a lot. And so I see guys winning tournaments that are thanking their paddle sponsor, even though they're in a 2019 pedal drive. And how did that paddle sponsor actually help you? And so now you're just a salesman and now you're not actually being genuine about what you're using and what you love. You're, you're thanking a paddle company that did absolutely nothing, but because that paddle is a little bit more sexier and it's a little bit more expensive and you're rocking it on your boat, now you have to thank that paddle company People who aren't even fishing fishing tournaments and winning, those people are thinking they're paddle company. No, nah, they're just happy that they got a free paddle because they convinced somebody that they were valuable enough to have a free paddle. And so I just feel like people don't want to hear that, but they need to hear that, especially if we love our industry and we love kayak fishing and we don't want that persona to take over what it is we love and do. I just want to say that pro staffing, not that pro staffing is bad, please, have be a, be a pro staff. But the moment that's your identity, your full identity, and that's not just something, you know, a relationship you have, but you are a pro staff. You're not Heath. You are pro staff. You're not Wendy. You're not, you are pro staff. You're not Phil. That's who you are. I thought you were Phil, but you also pro staff. See, that's where, that's where, that's where it gets sketchy, okay? And so, um, I just think that that is something that needs to be said and talked about more, especially by industry leaders, not saying I am one whatsoever, but I'm talking about real industry leaders, people, the market, I'm talking about the marketing directors that are letting this happen. I'm talking about the marketing directors that are, that are buying in to a lot of this crap, man. A lot of people get the product and they don't even hold up their end of the deal. Trust me because I'm one of them. I'm one of the guys that falls for it sometimes. And so I've been a lot more strict on who I send product out to, not just for Yak Tribe. I'm talking about for the other companies that I participate in their marketing director um, platform and so or position. And so um, that, Phil, I think is a word that people need to, to hear. Be Phil. And Phil, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying be Phil. Be, be the best marsh site fisherman that you can be. But don't go thanking your paddle sponsor. I mean, you actually paddle. You know, I'm trying to think of something else. Don't go thanking your pedal drive sponsor, bro. You don't, you're not in a pedal drive. You know what I mean? Just be the best feel that you can be. Bring the best content that you can be. And guys, if you do that, oh my gosh, people will want to know what is it you're using? What is it that you're actually using out there? Because I want to buy it. And I believe that's how real pro staffing is done. Use it. Be about it. Show it off. Do your thing. And people will want to know what is that thing? What's that little thing you have clipped onto your belt? Oh, that? That is something that my boy Rex developed. That is where you can put your paddle, so you can put your paddle, clip it to your belt loop, and so when you're fishing, 
you can uh you can you don't have to put your paddle down and make noise you can just cast and so that right there is a paddle holder clip okay and so that is how real pro staffing is done that is how real marketing is done you don't have to say it you can just be about it and then people want to know about it and so guys i hope that um I hope that you guys uh, appreciated some of the insight that I'm sharing on these questions. I hope I wasn't too tough, but I think it. I think it's questions that are that are great and needed to be answered. Um, and this is what you get. You get real, raw, real life stuff. What's in my brain? And so I didn't mean to offend anybody. I'm just trying to offer. Um, I'm just trying to offer advice. Um, and, and it's just my opinion. And guys, I could be completely wrong. I always leave like 40% room for error. You know, I try to leave room to say that I can be wrong. I'm definitely wrong a lot of the time. Uh, probably most of the time. But guys, I just want to say thank you for asking those questions. Thank you for listening to the show. The next episode is also going to be a Q&A question. So if you want to ask some questions that you want answered, go ahead and shoot me a DM on Yak Tribe's Instagram or my personal one, or go to yak-tribe.com and you'll see a contact form on there where you can actually send me the, uh, the question through a contact form and I'll do my best to get on the show and to answer those things for you. And so guys, I want to say thank you so much for sticking this one out to the end, um, for watching, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, or listening, whether it's on Spotify or SoundCloud or Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for buying into what it is we're doing. Guys, um, you can get some, I get questions about this swag and stuff like that, decals. You can go to our website. We have decals and shirts and hats. I'm not trying to be a salesman, but you guys have asked me, so I'm answering. You can find those things on our website, yak Tribe. Dot com. And guys, I'm so excited for our next episode for another Q&A. Thank you for sticking out with me. Thank you for asking the questions. Thank you for being a part of Yak Tribe. And thank you for all that you guys do and for allowing me to have this platform that I have so that I can share with you guys some of these things and do what it is I love. And guys, so my name is Heath. I'm the host of YTKS, Yak Tribe Kayak Show. Our episodes drop every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll see you guys next Monday.